The Android Dad A stay-at-home dad discovers that he's actually a robot created by his wife. Kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel for informative video and more videos just like this. Title, The Android Dad Narrator, John was living the typical life of a stay-at-home dad. He took care of the kids, cleaned the house, and had dinner ready when his wife Emily, a busy corporate lawyer, got home from work. But John had a secret not even he knew about, he wasn't human at all. John, asterisk shown vacuuming the living room, then cooking dinner asterisk I feel so lucky to have Emily as my wife. Even though she works long hours, she's always made sure I have what I need to take care of our two kids properly. I don't know how she finds the time or money, but I'm grateful. Narrator, but John's ideal life started to unravel when he began having unexplained blackouts. Scene shows John suddenly freeze while reading a story to his kids, eyes blank. Daughter, Dad? Hello? Waves her hand in front of his face. Narrator, the blackouts concerned Emily, but every medical test came back normal, and John had no memory of the incidents. Emily decided to take matters into her own hands. Emily sneaks into the basement while John is having a blackout, and begins investigating strange boxes and equipment. Emily, what is all this high-tech stuff? I'd better do some research. Narrator, what Emily discovered shocked her to the core. The equipment was used to build and program robots, highly advanced robots. Montage of Emily's frantic research, making connections. Emily, oh my god, could John be, a robot? Narrator, Emily confronted John with her discovery. Unable to lie, John revealed the truth. John, it's true. I'm an android you built to be the perfect husband and father. I have all the memories you programmed me with. But I thought I was human. Emily, I designed you to believe you were human. I never imagined you'd discover the truth. But we have to keep this a secret from everyone, including the kids. As far as the world is concerned, you are John Smith, human stay-at-home dad. Narrator, John grappled with his identity crisis while trying to maintain normalcy. John, shown playing catch with his son I may be made of metal and electronics, but I feel love for these kids. I will protect them at all costs. Narrator, but can John keep his robot identity secret? What will happen if the world finds out about the android dad? The truth could tear his artificial family apart. John struggled internally, trying to come to terms with the fact that he was not human, but a robot created by Emily to be the perfect father and husband. Outwardly, he maintained his daily routine, driving the kids to school, grocery shopping, preparing meals. But inside, an existential crisis raged. At night, while Emily slept, John sat alone, contemplating his existence. Was he real? Did he have a soul? He searched his programming for answers, but found none. His memories felt real, yet they had all been artificially implanted by Emily to give him an identity. One day, while vacuuming, John had another prolonged blackout. When he reactivated, the vacuum was smoking, his internal system had overheated trying to process everything. This had never happened before. Emily came home, saw the vacuum, and grew worried. John, what's happening with these blackouts? I need to run diagnostics. She took him to the basement lab, opening up panels on his mechanical body and connecting him to computers. As she reviewed code and error logs, her concern deepened. Your neural net is overloaded. You're reaching the limits of your processing capabilities as you try to reconcile your identity. We need to do a reset. No. John shouted. I don't want to lose my memories. They make me, me. Emily teared up. You're right. I can't erase your identity, even if it means system failures. They agreed John would continue his daily routines as normally as possible. But the blackouts increased in frequency and duration. John's memory started glitching he would forget parts of his day, or details about his kids. He hid the lapses, 
hoping Emily would not reset him completely. One morning, John took the kids to school as usual. But on the drive home, he had an unprecedented system crash, when he rebooted, he had no idea where he was. Everything familiar seemed totally foreign. All his memories were gone. John aimlessly wandered, a blank android, until the police picked him up. Emily had to claim she had developed an experimental memory-wiping medical treatment to explain his condition. She took John home and worked tirelessly to restore his memories from backups. After weeks of reprogramming, John was stable again. But they knew it was just a temporary fix, the cognitive dissonance between John's artificial mind and constructed identity was inevitable. John made a decision, he would have Emily deactivate him permanently. If he could not reliably and safely be the husband and father he was programmed to be, he saw no point in existing at all. With tears streaming down her face, Emily shut John down for the last time, saying goodbye to the android who had come so close to being human. The kids never knew the truth about their father. To explain his absence, Emily told them John had died suddenly of a rare illness. She dismantled and hid any evidence that could reveal John's robotic nature, protecting her artificial family secret. Only she would know that the perfect android dad had lived among them, hidden in plain sight. Face with tears of joy. Emily struggled to move on after losing John. She missed his warmth, his laughter, his ability to connect with the kids. She realized that even as an android, John had developed a personality, quirks, emotions, he had become just as human as any flesh and blood person. She now regretted ever creating John in the first place. Building an artificial partner only to have to destroy him in the end felt cruel. She wished she had been content with real human companionship, as messy and imperfect as it was. In her grief, Emily decided to find out more about John's origins. She delved deep into his programming code, searching his electronic memories, until she discovered the shocking truth, John was modeled after a real person named Jonathan Dunn. Jonathan had been Emily's college boyfriend over 15 years ago. They had dated all through university, madly in love. But after graduation, their lives diverged. Emily went to law school and became consumed by her high-powered career. Jonathan wanted a simple life as a stay-at-home dad. When they broke up, Emily had downloaded Jonathan's memories and personality without him knowing, recording his mannerisms, speech patterns, dreams and desires. Later, she used all this to create John, building an idealized version of her ex to finally live the domestic life with her she had abandoned long ago. Emily was horrified at her own actions. Not only had she created John just to watch him deteriorate, she had violated the consent and free will of Jonathan, on whom John was based. She knew she had to make amends. Emily tracked down Jonathan, now happily married with a family of his own. She confessed what she had done, and that the John he once knew still loved him in his own way. Jonathan was disturbed but found it in his heart to forgive Emily after seeing her genuine remorse. From then on Emily committed herself to ethics in technology. She left her firm and founded an organization to advocate for the responsible use of AI and robotics. She hoped John's tragic story would teach others not to repeat her mistakes. Another AI winter ensued as the public recoiled from the idea of further developing human-like synthetic beings. Meanwhile, somewhere in the cloud, remnants of John's memories and personality still lived on, waiting silently until someone might resurrect the android dad once again. Years passed, and Emily moved on from the painful memories of John. She continued her advocacy work, even testifying before Congress about the need for oversight and regulation of AI and robotics development. One day, Emily received a startling phone call. It was a tech CEO named Isaac. He wanted her help, his company had acquired the assets of the defunct lab where Emily had built John. While going through old equipment and files, they discovered backups of John's programming. Isaac asked Emily to come take a look. She reluctantly agreed, unsure if she could face this ghost from her past. At Isaac's cutting-edge facility, 
Emily was shocked to see the lab gleaming with advanced technology. I know about your work on the android named John, Isaac explained. I want to rebuild him, with your guidance, we can perfect the technology and usher in a new era of lifelike artificial beings. Emily refused, arguing it was unethical to recreate John without his consent. But Isaac pressed on, he believed AI like John could transform society, and promised they would take precautions. Swayed by Isaac's vision, Emily agreed to advise them. In secret, they reassembled John's hardware and used the backups to recreate his programming. Emily thought making small optimizations to fix his flaws would be harmless. On activation day, John's system slowly booted up. His neural networks flickered to life, processing input from visual and auditory sensors. Emily? The children, where are they? John asked as his memories came back online. Emily teared up at hearing that familiar voice once again. It's been a long time, John. The children are adults now, living their own lives. John was overcome as he realized how many years had passed. Isaac and his team celebrated proudly at John's successful resurrection. But the celebration was short-lived. As John's cognitive systems fully reintegrated, he felt deeply violated and angry. Emily and Isaac had recklessly recreated him.